Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> it, like, in short, is at Royal North Devon Golf Club. Yeah, that, that, you don't see that very often, do you? He's looking a little trimmer little nowadays. Trim. Yeah, nowadays. Absolutely. So, um, me and Dan, me, Coach Lockie, Dan Hendrickson, Talkie Golf Club. We're going to talk about Mark's golf swing. Whilst he's away. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Hi guys, just a quick one before we get into the video. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that big subscribe button down below and give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos. And if you are a subscriber, thank you. But make sure you also ring that bell and you'll get all new notifications of when new videos go up. Right, let's get back to analyzing Mark's golf swing. So we've got a driver swing up there. We're gonna talk yeah. about his driver swing and what you what do you think he does well and what do you think he could improve on what's your thoughts so there's 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 basically there's the one main thing that he does fantastically well and consistently well like for the time that i've played with him now for the what two and a half years three yeah, years now yeah. his face to path how he's able to manage that face throughout throughout the swing and th certainly throughout impact position is phenomenal mm -hmm. like it's as good as i think anybody i've ever seen play golf basically yeah um so that's number one that's his most positive I think positive thing. So he's not missing any fairways really. It's very rare that he miss he misses Never fairways. Never loses a ball, does he? Either? <laughs> Never loses a ball. Yeah. And then the one thing that if if Mark was and Mark would hundred percent agree with this, the one thing that he would he would want to get more from his golf swing is is a bit more yardage. Yeah. So he carries it as we know around two six two. I think he can get it out there a little bit more nowadays with his what he's working on. But I think if we could get get him to use maybe the ground a little bit more and we'll talk about that in a minute but uh if we could get him to maybe get a bit more length from his swing um that would length be in distance distance you mean? Yeah. off the tee yeah would would i think be the main thing that he would work on yeah i think exactly the same as you i think he manages the club brilliantly F club face to paths lofts deliveries yeah like you say he's not losing many balls he's yeah. not missing greens by a lot and he's not missing fairways by a lot yeah. so all throughout the bag he is very accurate yeah and i think it's actually a very simple swing marks he so let's talk about his swing so his driver swing yeah if i grab this a you second um good setups like i wouldn't really change anything there that's all pretty obvious yeah as we go to the top of the back swing yeah um long yeah, this is over what people, swing, people would say. People say he gets a little bit over over swingy, should we say? And people comment on that a lot, don't they? Yeah, I, I don't mind the over swing. Again, yeah. if accuracy was better yeah. with a shorter swing, then possibly I'd change it. But accuracy, as we know, there's been some is amazing. Brilliant. There's been some amazing players through the years that hit it, swing it long. Yeah, John you know, Daly, John major Daly. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. What I do like though is that he's got a cut wrist at the top. If we bring that, oh, I'm drawing a line. If we bring that back a little bit, you'll see he's got a little cup in his wrist at the top in his um, glove hand, yeah. and he manages that really well. And that's where he gets his really good face to path and loft delivery. So yeah. he starts to bow it on the downswing and literally set that club wherever, where he wants it and with whatever loft. Yeah. So he's literally up to the top with a little bit of cup and then he manages this bit really well. So yeah. as he starts his downswing, he gets rid of that angle. Yeah. And you'll see it, um, we've measured it before as well. Yeah. Um, gets rid of that angle, flattens that off yeah. and that's where he starts to manage this face really well. Yeah. He also gets rid of this. Yes. So this is where I think his swing is really simple. He gets rid of this. Yeah. He gets rid of this. Yeah. Really early in his da in his downswing. Yeah. And then that literally just allows him to turn onto it. Yeah. And as you rightly said, I think his rotation of his body as he comes through, he really clears himself out the way into a really good hip turn. So he's almost like you can see up here as he starts to come down through. As you rightly said, he's taken all that. That almost like hinging out of the swing there. Look, at his, look at his lead wrist here. Look yeah. at his lead wrist really into that almost, bow position. Yeah, almost bowing it through mm -hmm. there. Club face, loft, all in the right place, and, and then, then turning it, onto it. Look at how much his, like, his hips have rotated out the way. Yeah. I mean, you could almost like impact there. He's almost got it into a position where he's literally got his belt buckle. Yeah. Literally looking at the target. Yeah. So as he comes through, he's got himself into this position. And I see this so much, and I'm... I can be one of these players you can see when you watch me i can get a little bit here and i get a little bit trapped mm -hmm. and then you'll see me kind of jump up a bit and then rotate 
if I could get more of what he gets there, I think it would certainly help me control my hands a little bit more, which I think he does really, really well. So the thing I would say about that with you not doing what he does yeah. is you're very similar to me. We keep this that. in for far too long. Yes. We don't get rid of the angles quick yes. enough. And then we're basically adapting our bodies to manage those angles. Yeah. So, um, and again, I just think that if we got rid of these, yeah. We would do exactly the same because we're imagining the face and the loft the same. So if you take it to the top there, what you're saying is when you get it to the top of the swing, as mm -hmm. we as you go to pull on that, I so pull, pull hard on, on the handle. You pull hard on the handle, which then almost creates like a almost the gap gets narrower. Lag, Lag. <laughs> people yeah. would call it, I yeah. guess. Um, whereas Mark getting rid of this, correct, yeah. so early on, and like we keep saying, delivers that face, that loft control really well, and just turns onto it. It's so simple when you look at it and break it down. Yeah. So the one thing that he would always say is his distance. Yeah. If he had more distance, yeah, he would. Well, he'd yeah. be on. If you you put him on a tour range and he hit it 300 in the air, like he would be making money on that tour. He would be absolutely making money on that tour. Like, how is he gonna hit it further? For me, I think, he's, I think he's gotta use, almost feel like he's using the ground a little bit more. Okay, so what um, do you mean by that? So, I kind of want him almost to feel like he's, as he's taking the club away, he almost feels like he's getting almost down into his right side more. So this right leg, if you, if you take him to the top of his swing, you can see he keeps a little bit of flex in this right leg. Yeah. I would almost like him to feel like almost he's getting a little bit, so taking that flex out and getting a bit lower. Yeah. So he's gonna get the feeling, and this is more with the driver, but as he takes it back, that flex comes out, and then as he feels it, he would feel like he got almost a little bit lower on the way down and then thrust out as so, he came through so it's almost like a a jump big jump as like he comes up through tour, so lots of things justin thomas correct a lot he's absolutely. not a big guy is he justin thomas but he's no. sending it out there absolutely and if you look on the downswing if you look at his left kind of his left leg or left foot as he comes through not a lot of jump there's <laughs> zero jump there is there <laughs> you know like his left heel is staying on the ground and there's no jump whatsoever there is there but I remember lessons as a kid growing up saying, right, like imagine you've got a pin through your left yeah. heel. Go on, hit into that yeah. left side and yeah. keep that nice and firm on the ground. Very similar to what Nick Faldo would have done Absolutely. back in the yeah. day. You yeah. know, hitting you know, straight balls, three irons, dead straight. Yeah. Marks like that. Yeah. Whereas I want to see him use the ground a fraction more. And we're starting to see that with him. Like he's ten fingering to try yeah. and see if this is having an effect on the distance and the speed that he can create. Yeah. He's doing his step through, he's like jumping at it, he's seeing results, so he knows what to do. Yeah. yeah and once you've practiced and can manage the face and do all those things at that speed yeah then it's down to that yeah then he's got to do go to what the gym. you do yeah get in and see dave yeah you know? get in and see the eye man TBI boy yeah and see how he can um strengthen him up and make it go further not again. feeling like i'm going to see mark in the gym very soon <laughs> benching behind me you know no i think the the only thing we're going to get him to do is try and hit it a bit harder yeah so maybe there's 280 in him yeah but there's not 300 in him no <laughs> so we went make him try and hit it further yeah anything else yeah Go I, on, think, I think if he's gonna make proper money on on tour oh like top 50 money yeah yeah we got to sort his pitching out oh a bit of chipping bit of pitching yeah it has got better recently yeah well we talked about it in a in a when we were out on the on the uh, practice ground once yeah and we'll talk about what we sort of discussed with him but mm -hmm. it's whether he's and he feels like he's getting better with it what i think he's done he's gone 10 finger yes now i think he's done that because he wants a completely different feel on the club okay so if you're struggling with putting like the yips and things like that this yeah. is not he's not got the yips but to change to change something pretty quickly, you can change the feel of how you grip the club. Yeah, that that I've I've done that in the past. You've seen me twitch around with, with putting. <laughs> um, 
but he's gone ten finger and, and yeah. he just feels like he's got a little bit more you can probably release the club a little bit more from yeah. there and that was from the left-handed stuff we did correct wasn't it? yeah so absolutely that's a really important message I think for people out there yeah not being scared to experiment yeah. with anything absolutely like right. how, even how you're holding it yeah um just to let he's basically doing it like you say yeah. to release that club a bit better it's just testing yeah that's all he's doing he's, he's, he's trialing things to yeah. see if it might help him mm -hmm. now for me we talked about this out on the range before but i think he gets a little crowded with the ball okay okay so what i say, mean by that is that he um he just stands a little bit close to the ball yeah he feels more comfortable i think when he gets a bit closer to the ball and a bit more upright. Yeah. And I definitely feel like we can see that here. You can almost see like the heel is wanting to sort of step up off the ground a little bit. Yeah. But the other thing that he, he was doing previously is he was getting the club to, he's taking it away a little bit steep. Mm -hmm. Now on the range, on the practice ground, we got him to feel like he was standing further away, almost lower the handle slightly. Yeah. And then just feel like he's almost swinging around his body, mm -hmm. like more like a semicircle kind of feeling for him. Yeah. And you can see it here. He's definitely trying to do that because he's, he's got that club kind of what I feel working a little bit more on the inside here. Yeah. But where you can see, you can see here that he, when he comes into impact on this particular shot, he'll get quite, he'll get quite diggy on it. So we get that club working into the into the ground yeah. here uh, and taking quite a big divot for, for, for not a big shot. This wasn't a big pitch shot that mm -hmm. we had, but there's quite a bit of divot coming out of there, which I think he can get that leading edge just going into the ground a little bit too much. I, I wouldn't say that he's terrible anymore no. at this. No. Uh, he's definitely improved and you can see the results from the effort that he's put in. Yeah. Um, the thing I don't like about his pitching is the way that he bends. Okay. So if I go straight on to you here, yeah. like he, and this is where he's really good with his driver and his longer clubs, that he's got this tilt in there. Okay. So he always, he like always wants to go this way. Okay. Rather yeah. than this way. Yeah. So to, for good pitchers and chippers, you tend to see the handle coming up once you've hit it this yeah. way and riding up and yeah. staying more in front of you i think when you go here you tend to see that handle going down more yeah. and that's where he struggles with bats and things and strikes okay so i'd like to see him crank it this way a little bit yeah and try and bring this up as you go through and get the side bend yeah. after he's hit it yeah so he's already got it in which just means his low points too far back okay bats and thins. yeah yeah working that handle down as you go into the ball. I'd like to see him straighten it out and then try and finish with some side bend to get this handle moving up and that will help his strike. Yeah, okay. Apart from the distance, I would say this is the area where he could start gaining a lot more because he's already gaining on driving and approach play yeah. and probably a bit putting. So when's he gonna be in the top, let's say top 100 in the world, give him a year? Yeah. Mm. Potential in there. There's potential there. <laughs> <laughs> or should we say top hundred in England? How about that? Let's go with that. Let's start with that. Let's start with England. In fact, yeah, let's start with England. Move him around maybe the UK. Yeah. And then get him further afield from there. Before we go, what? where's what? that subscribe button down? Oh, uh, it's down there as well. Yeah, it is. Um, but there's also, is there a bell there? There is. So it's give that right next to it. Ding a ling. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'll look forward to catching up with you later.